Well, I'm a big fan of this guy, Greg Ellingson, uh, a man who doesn't need any introduction to our viewers, but the uh, CFL, great. I think we got a little reverb going, but we'll get that figured out. Eskimos, Elks, Red Blacks, Thai Cats, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jelly Man joins us today. Where are you from, Greg? Where are you at, Greg? I'm down in Tampa right now. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, always good to chat with you, Greg. Now, I saw you on Twitter the other day saying you would sign with the fan base that gave you the most likes on your tweet or something along those lines. How is the free agent period going for you here? It's good. I don't know. You know, I was just up with it, what everybody's doing and uh, checking the Twitter feed, you know, during this open time when everybody can communicate and kind of see what's going on around the league. So I just thought it'd be fun to kind of reach out with the fans and, uh, you know, interact with them and, uh, you know, see what's going on. It kind of sparked with, uh, you know, when Speedy B was talking about the rule change for uh, missed field goals and the a single point in the end zone, I just had some fun with uh, Peter Dykowski talking about, you know, maybe some potential rule changes and uh, just ma had a little fun with it. So I figured I'd, uh, you know, join in with the fans and, you know, see, see who could pull me in their direction the most. Well, good for you. I think that's awesome when players do that. What type of um, reaction did you get with that? And is there a fan base that's leading uh, coming out of that? Uh, actually, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> they kind of asked if there was multiple votes could, uh, you know, happen throughout the day. I was like, if you message me every single day, I'll, I'll count a vote and a tally for every team that does it. So I uh, have some, some, some consistent followers that uh, have been messaging me every day, trying to pull me in a direction. So H Hamilton, uh, you know, those fans have been doing a pretty good job, you know, and I was blessed to start my career with them uh, for two years. So, you know, it's been fun interacting with those fans that I started my career with. Uh, you know, Winnipeg, they put a lot of, you know, they use that uh, Jefferson tweet and meme of, you know, come on down to Winnipeg. Uh, quite quite a bit, and uh, definitely Saskatchewan. You know, you know, they always have a great fan base, and you know, really do a good job with making sure that you know it's known who they want and uh, interacting with their fans a lot. And, and then obviously, uh, you know, the Red Blacks, uh, the history that we had there for four years. So a lot of the fans that I've had connections with, and uh, you know, known over the years and kept in contact with, they made sure they did a good job of uh, you know putting some snow angels up and uh, some second and twenty five miracle on Bank Street videos for me to to interact with them with. So it's it's been a lot of fun and. You know, that's kind of what you have to do with free agency is you have to have fun with it because at the end of the day, um, it doesn't really shake out until the eighth, you know, because uh, some guys are just going to re-sign with the teams uh, that they're with because, you know, most players, I think, want to create a legacy with the team that, they're, that they've been with and they kind of want to stay in, in one spot. You know, that's kind of a dream as an athlete. Um, and then aside from that, you know, just kind of see where the cards fall because GMs have decisions to make. They try to keep the players that they want. And then other than that, you're kind of waiting around to see how things shake out because, you don't really know where you're going to go until uh, you see what everybody else does and, and, and the dominoes fall in the way they're supposed to. I'm glad to hear you say you're having fun with it because if you don't laugh, you'll cry because of the stress associated with this. But I swear, I've been following your career for a long time. I never thought you'd leave Hamilton. Then I never thought you'd leave Ottawa. I don't think you'll leave Edmonton, although your boy Trevor Harris is gone. But, I mean, four-time division all-star, one-time all-Canadian, a great cup champion. Can you explain to the fans why guys don't stay with one team anymore? Because if you just said it. If it was up to you, you would stay. But it's just not a real good business decision anymore. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of factors that play into that, right? Um, I guess when I left Hamilton, you know, the, the reason I left then at that point was uh, I've – kind of felt that I was undervalued, you know, that, that that was what was happened. You know, I didn't play too much. They kind of sat me the second half of the year. So, you know, as a player, you want to be on the field and, and you want to see when you go to free agency, you have teams telling you, you know, if you come here, you know, you're going to be at one of our guys. So that's why the switch from Hamilton to Ottawa was made because, you know, Hamilton kind of stopped playing me towards the, you know, the end of the season. And then Ottawa was, you know, willing to pay me money to, to come in there and, and, and be one of the guys with those, you know, Chris Williams and Ernest Jackson, Brad Sinopoli. And at that time, Mo Price. So, you know, you kind of see those guys start signing uh, with teams. You're like, wow, you know, you really have some potential to, you know, make a push for the Great Cup and be a successful team and get into the playoffs and, and, and make a crack at it. So at that point, that's why I switched. And then, you know, leaving from Ottawa, it was, uh, you know, kind of just one of those things where it, it felt like the you know value wasn't there for me anymore. And uh, you, you had other teams that are reaching out telling you, you know, they want you to be the guy. So definitely as a player, you have to kind of look out for yourself in the way that, you know, you don't want to have a, maybe an off game here and there, and then, you know, you get you get benched and, and then you're back in a position and not playing. You want to go somewhere where people believe in you. And as much as they believe in you, you want to believe in that team as well. You know, you want to have success. So 
you kind of go where uh, it's, you know is best for yourself. But at the end of the day, you know, when you look at it, you you really just want to be with a team that values you and also is able to be successful and uh, a place where you can interact and have fun. You know, that, that's what it all comes down to. For sure. And you will get that contract for sure. You'll get that offer. And I'm just excited to see where you play um, like all of your fans are. That, that's what makes this time of year a lot of fun. But I got to ask you something. Maybe it'll be where your boy Trevor Harris ends up because uh, Trevor, uh, the rumor is he's going to go to BC. I don't know. He said that we would be the first to know. What is it about you two and the special? Like, did you pick up any French in Ottawa, Greg? It's je ne sais quoi. Little special. I don't know what. Between you and Trevor Harris, what do you two have together? <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I don't know what it is. I, I think we both respect each other's game a lot. Um, definitely, he's one of the guys that, you know, comes prepared every day. You know, he, he's working at practice and, and you see the preparation he puts in. And, and when you see that, you, I mean, all quarterbacks have to do that. But he, he goes a step beyond, you know, the communications there. So, you know, that's kind of why we've always kept track of each other. You know, we chatted a few days ago and, you know, kind of just, Actually, we <laughs> had a nice little FaceTime uh, chat with a bunch of guys back from Ottawa, you know, that uh, that team with Deontay Spencer. You know, he jumped on the call and Willie Powell and, and Brad jumped in there, got to see his you know son James and, you know, just kind of reconnect here and there. But, you know, it's, it's just a friendship beyond football, right? Uh, that's kind of what brings guys together. And you talk to a lot of the great teams about their success and, you know, how the things they do throughout the season and pushing them uh, to be successful towards the end of the year and get into the Grey Cup. Every single one of those teams talks about the locker room, you know, being more than football and, and the brotherhood that they have. And, and that's what makes it special. And that's why you want to surround yourself with those guys. And, you know, I, I told him if we don't end up together uh, this year, you know, I'm always going to be in his corner rooting for him and, and, and watching from across the sideline. Uh, just hopefully not too much uh, luck when he's playing against me. But, you know, you never know where he was going to end up. I don't think anybody knows at this point exactly where they are, all, all the free agents. I think the eighth is really going to be a telltale sign of, you know, where everybody uh, ends up and the cards fall into place. And, you know, then you have some decisions to make at that point. That's going to be quite a day. Hey, I could talk to you all day, Greg, but I'm going to only ask you one more question. I've been down in Florida for quite a while. I'm still in the Celsius thermometer in my head. <laughs> I know. It's 26 degrees Celsius here in South Florida. I'm sure it's similar in Tampa. What did you think when you came to the CFL and the snow started flying for the first time, especially that 2013 Grey Cup when it was minus 52 when you guys got off the plane in Regina? How did you survive and not die as a Florida guy? That was uh, quite the shocker. I still have uh, some pictures from practicing at Regina uh, for that Grey Cup uh, when we had Henry Burris, and they they gave us a pretty good whooping, uh, you know, that game, and we weren't really in it. But leading up to that, I remember practicing, and it was literally a blizzard. Like I'm running routes downfield, 30, 25, 30 yards, in a, in a full like suit, sweatpants, sweatshirt, jacket, put it over my pads, and I can remember like barely seeing the ball leaving the quarterback's hands and like trying to track it through the snow as it's coming towards me. And also, I recall a couple guys on our team got frostbite uh, <laughs> during those practices. So that was the coldest. I think that was uh, really just threw me into the well, threw me into the ice, not the fire, but really threw me into the ice. And uh, you know, after that, it's never been that cold up there again uh, for any of the games I've played in. So once I went through that, I think I was you know an honorary Canadian at that point, and uh, it doesn't really phase me anymore. It's also a mental thing, you know? If you let it get to you, then, then you're gonna have some problems. Same with the rain or any other weather conditions. And that's why the CFL is great, you know? We, we really have to deal with all those different conditions throughout the season, especially going into the fall and the winter. And uh, whether it's sleet, whether it's a gray cup and we're sliding around in, you know, in Edmonton when we're playing Calgary, or, or whether it's in Regina when you're practicing through a blizzard, you know? You just have to mentally be tough and make sure that you can brave the elements no matter what they are. I apologize. The fans are loving this. There's just some questions have come in for you. One is your big puppy dog. My cousin's watching in Medicine Hat. Christine, she wants to know, what's your dog's name and breed? Yeah, what's your story on that big fella? What you doing? He's just sleeping right now. His <laughs> name's uh, Odin. He's four years old. He's taking a little nap, as you can see. Uh, he's a Great Dane Mastiff, uh, about 160 pounds, right? Odin, come here. Come here. Come on. See if he can creep over here and say <laughs> hi. <laughs> There he comes. There you go. There he comes. This is a good stretch. Hey, right Odin. Hey, Odin. <laughs> yeah, we want, wherever we go, we're a package deal. So if you, we need some D linemen, you know, this guy will make a pretty good run at the quarterback if you put a stake on his neck. Yeah, How about no kidding. That? And uh, we're talking about a CFL skills competition, obviously, because the NFL had it last night. The fans want to know who you think is the most accurate quarterback in the CFL if we had a competition for that. 
Oh, man. I mean, it's a little biased, but, I mean, I'm going to go with some of the things I've seen with Trevor, you know, at least playing right now, right? Like, I've seen some crazy games where he's uh, not missed the pass, you know, for a whole half almost and going to the third quarter, uh, you know, what was what, he on his career, like 71% or so, somewhere around there? I could be wrong. You probably have the stats better than I do. But uh, I've seen some crazy games where he's just been so locked in that, you know, he, he barely misses a, a throw and puts it right where it's supposed to be. So that'd probably be my guys the most, you know, accurate right now. But, uh, you know, there, there's some young guys coming up right now, too. Uh, Dane Evans, man, that guy's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, you know, Masoli's all, you know, there's a reason those guys in the Great Cup and, and, and Zach Caleros and the way he can extend the, the pocket and really push the ball down the field and put it where it's supposed to be. You can never forget about Bo Levi. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of talent around there, and and hopefully with uh, having one season last season without missing one, like we did the year before, you know, everybody's a little bit more locked in this year, and uh, we can really see guys pushing the ball down the field and, and making some big plays like you know we're used to seeing. Wouldn't it be fun to have a competition? Hopefully one day, uh, while we're all still young, Greg. Good luck in free agency. Blessings to you. Thanks for the time, and uh, stay safe down there. Thanks for having me, Rod. Always appreciate it. Call me anytime. You betcha. Thank you. I guess I should say up there because he's north of where I am. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of the Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.